If you wanted to see how underinflated tire affects the top speed of your machine, here is a calculation that considers the difference in circumference that the contact patch causes. For this calculation, take a look at these shapes. This is the shape of the wheel that's uh, fully inflated and uh, is not on the ground. And here is the shape of the wheel that's also fully inflated but is touching the ground here. Now this is vastly exaggerated here. Your contact patch is not going to be this big until you have Nah, not even if you have a totally flat tire because you're going to be running on your rims but just work with this shape, it's easier what you need for this calculation is first off, on uh, this kind of wheel you have to measure the circumference so hang up your bike on a nail just about like so put a masking tape or some kind of tape around the circumference of the tire here, where the tire is the highest Okay, don't try to calculate it, it's not going to work. There's no way you can accurately measure the radius or the diameter on this one because stuff is in the way. So grab yourself some masking tape, put it around it, put a line across, take it off, measure it or put some measuring tape on it that's already graduated. Either which way, get it done. So that's the first step to do and that's the number that you see there. The this, that particular wheel has a circumference of 2050 millimeters. Second thing to do is you need to measure the length of this contact patch. To do it, you're gonna need a piece of chalk and you need your fully inflated tire. What I did with the chalk. Now, this is all of a sudden a different bicycle, but don't worry about it. Just do the math. What I did here is that I marked the tire here with some chalk from that point to about that point and I'm gonna transfer the chalk onto the paper when I sit on the bike just come back to the perch here for a sec so I can do this yeah, about there just rotate the tire like so and put the bicycle down. And it's important that they uh, uh, will have a good contact patch there. Please try to choose a chalk that will show on paper and don't roll your bicycle anywhere. So engage your brakes and put all your body weight on it. Just about like so. There. That's important. Make sure the bicycle does not roll anywhere in the process. So that's the no weight contact patch and that's my contact patch with my weight on. Let's measure it. There about. Let's see, here is my handy dandy IKEA tape measure. I want to go millimeters. So, this one is faint, but if I bring it close enough, you can see it has a definite end and a definite beginning. Okay, that makes sense. I hope so. So, we're gonna measure it. I am looking at, say, 119 millimeters. No, it's just a hair under 12 centimeters. So I have 119 millimeters. That's a delightful number. We'll work with that. Oh, by the way, I only inflated my tire to about 50 psi. It should run somewhere around on 90. So the contact patch is intentionally longer than it uh, should be. We'll see how that affects the top speed here. So step two, the contact patch was 119 millimeters here in this direction. Now, we need the circumference of this shape and uh, it's easy enough to see that this will be shorter 
the end of full circle. Now we need the distance from here all the way around there. And for that you do need to calculate. But do take these these two measurements. There, CP, contact patch. Okay, what you need to do, next one, say step three, from that measurement there, you have to calculate the diameter of the wheel. You calculate the diameter of the wheel, again, don't try to measure it, just measure the circumference, okay? Calculate the diameter of the wheel by taking the circumference and dividing it by pi. So what you do is 2050 divided by 3.14 and whatever else the digits are in the calculator. So I'm just going to do it on the calculator real cash. 2050 divided by second function pi equals I have 652 millimeters plus change. Leave the de digits, all of the digits on the calculator or write them down. I'm going to write them down just a little bit. 650 two and a half millimeter for diameter of the wheel so that's two feet and a little bit step four I'm gonna need the radius calculated out of this diameter so what you do is you take the diameter and you chop it in half so that's why I left all those numbers on the calculator display so I can just go divided by two equals I do need most of the digits are that number. 326.2676. That's an ugly 6. And then I have 333 repeating. There it is. That radius is important because that radius number is going to plug in here. There's your radius of the wheel. That's what we just calculated. We need that radius to make a right angle triangle here because I need to calculate this angle and to do that we are gonna do we're gonna have to step five we have to chop that uh, contact patch size into two again because we for this cat this right angle triangle there's your right angle for the triangle for this triangle calculation to get this angle I'm gonna need the hypotenuse and I'm gonna need one side I don't have this side but I don't need it either I need an angle so anyhow I need to cut this 119 millimeter in half super simple 119 divided by 2 59 and a, 59 and a half millimeters so what just 59.5 is what I write down here. Next thing I know, next thing I need to do is calculate the angle. That angle is calculated by, I'm gonna write it here, step six. We're gonna need the that sine button on the calculator and we're gonna need the second function on it where it says sine minus one in the corner so it's gonna be second function sine and uh, it goes so sine minus one so because it's a second function sine you're gonna to need to divide that number the that's the side of the triangle opposite the angle and then we need the hypotenuse so sine equals opposite over hypotenuse that is the 59 and a half divided by the hypotenuse which it happens to be the radius that number so I'm just gonna put down 326.2 but on the calculator I'm gonna enter all of those numbers and then after this I'm gonna get an angle I need that angle there for my next step 59.5 divided by 326.2676333 equals that number second function sine 10 degrees 0.5 I need all of that number 7 step 7 so after this calculation I got 10.5 degrees 10.5 degrees for 
the tip of the triangle. Now I need to double it because I need to consider all this, okay? To calculate the circumference of the wheel here, I need to know all this angle. So I'm just gonna go angle times two equals. So I'm leaving that one on the calculator's display. I'm just gonna go times two equals and leave it on the calculator's display. You need it there as is. So that's 21.015. 21.015 degrees. So this one here, I'm gonna fill it in now. This is the 21 degree angle. If your contact patch is 119 millimeters, that's gonna be there, a uh, 21 degree angle plus change. You need that because, because you need to calculate now this angle, all of it on the inside. Now a full circle is 360 degrees. So this big cheese here is 360 lessened by this 21, whatever, whatever. So I'm just gonna go minus 360. That's gonna give you a negative number. Don't worry about it, because you can just press the plus minus button. That's the angle that you need to write down precisely, 338 degrees. So what I did for step eight is 360 degrees minus that number, the 21.015 equals 338. 0.9848379 degrees. I need that fairly accurately. What I'm gonna do with that angle is I'm gonna do a ratio and proportion with it. Okay, and this is how that goes. The 360 degrees in this circle is proportionate to the full circumference of the circle just as this 338 degree turn is proportionate to the partial circumference of the wheel. I'll show you how it works. Next page. Actually, let me just open it a little bit back so I can get the numbers. So my ratio and proportion goes full circumference of the circle proportionate to the full turn of the circle and the full circumference will be similar to the partial circumference and will also be similar to that 338 degree angle plus change so but you get the idea there to get this partial circumference you need to multiply that one with that one and then divide it by 360 so that number on the calculator, that 338, leave it there. I copied it there just in case, but leave it there. You need to multiply it with the full circumference, which was 2050. So you take that 338 degrees, plus the deci all the decimal digits, times it by 2050, and then divide it by 360 degrees. You're going to get the partial circumference out of it. So, times 2050 divided by 360 equals 1930. There, you can see that number, 0.3 millimeters. So, 1930.330327. So, that's your partial circumference there. Now, to it, you need to add the contact patch, the 119. Very easy, 119, add. So save that number on the calculator's display and you can just add 119 to it. Plus 119 equals that number. Now take a look at it, 2049.3, millimeters. So that's your circumference new. Circumference new with the contact patch 
touching the ground with the tire inflated to only 52 psi instead of 90 something and again that was your original circumference so you can see that the tire is compressed and the size of the wheel is getting smaller so how does that affect the top speed just remember that your top speed was calculated by uh, taking uh, the diameter of the wheel with diameter times your pedaling rpm it was also times with your transmission ratio the uh, driven sprocket divided by the drive sprocket and sorry the other way around drive over driven and it was also multiplied by a couple of numbers to get a kilometer per hour out of it. If I flip the pages back to the calculation, let me just see. Yeah, we had 48 and 13 teeth on that one. So that was 48 divided by 13. 48 divided by 13 multiplied by the RPM, which was 120 because I can pedal 120 times a minute. It was multiplied by the 2.05, because now I converted it to meters. It's a 2.05 meter wheel size. So, so in a minute, in a minute, I can travel that distance, that 908 meter distance. I wanna times it by 60 times 60 and then I also want to divide it by 1000 so divided by 1000 now my bicycle stop speed was 54.498 kilometer per hour with the we're calculating with the size of wheel, not touching the ground. Now recalculate with the wheel touching the ground. So those numbers do not change here. It's a 60 and it's a, and that was a divided by a thousand. I'm gonna do the same there, but that number changes. Move the decimal three spots here. And then that's gonna give us Go again, 48 divided by 13 times 120 times 60 divided by a thousand. Sorry, go again, 2.049. I want to enter all of those numbers 33, 03, 27. Yeah, three three zero three two seven. Okay, and I'm gonna times it by one twenty. Times it by forty eight. Divided by thirteen. Times it by sixty. Divided it by one thousand. There. Yeah. I got a new top speed. Forty eight point. Sorry, that's not forty eight. That's fifty four point forty eight. That's what I mean. O six. Five. Eight. Okay, good enough kilometer per hours. So, my top speed does get less, not by a whole lot, by about one hundredth of a kilometer per hour. But if you have a longer race to do, a Tour de France, it's gonna add up to a hundred yards, two hundred yards over. A span of eight hours of pedaling, six hours of pedaling, uh, you get the idea. So that's how you can work with your contact patch and uh, see how much your contact patch that's touching the ground is gonna get smaller when you when you inflate the tire to its uh, normal operating pressure to about on that bike and on that tire. So if you do 95 psi into it. It, I'm expecting it to be a lot shorter. So, have fun with math.